How y'all doing? It's another episode of True Seeking Trucker. We're getting into our Father's Word in the book of Jeremiah, for chapter 21. So with this, let's begin. Father God, thank you for this uh, chapter that we read. When uh, our society um, falls apart, um, you will save the remnant, the ones who are faithful to you, your beloved, the ones who try to do the right thing, who uh, don't practice in iniquity. And have Lord Jesus Christ um, cloak in their sin. Father God, thank you for uh, this day, for waking up the sinner. Thank you for the air I breathe, the food I eat. Thank you for providing for me and my family. Um, I'm not deserving one bit, not one bit. I boast only about you, Father. And I boast about your son. Because he that believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And uh, he is the way, the truth, and the light, and no one shall see the Father but through him. And in this we pray in Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, let's get started. Jeremiah 21, verse 1 reads, The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah said unto him, Peshur, the son of Melchah, and Zephaniah, Zephaniah, the son of Meshiah, the priest, saying, Verse 2, Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so, be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works that he may go up from us. So here we go. Um, the time period is coming, is come to the end where God told them to turn away and um, they didn't. They didn't. The um, leaders and the priests, the rulers, they continued on the on the road. So now that king of the Babylon is coming for them, they know this. They're crying out to God and asking Jeremiah to do this for them. Verse 3. Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall ye say to Zedekiah, verse 4, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands. So lay down your weapons. We with will fight against the king of Babylon, against the Chaldeans which besiege you without the walls. I will assemble them into the midst of the city. They're doing my, my bidding. You're going to go into captivity at this point. Verse 5. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm and even in anger and a fury and in great wrath. So, God is against you, and um, this is what's going to happen, and this and this is what you've been warned about, and now it's here. Verse 6, and I will smite the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. So, this is the, uh, these are the ones that are going to, uh, be be left for dead, right? There's some will be wounded. There's gonna be famine because all the spoilers are gonna bring take everything back to Babylon. Their their uh, food, their uh, their possessions, their riches. They're gonna uh, their uh, people, right? So verse seven. And afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people. And such are, such as are left in the city from pestilence and from the sword and from famine into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into the hand of the enemies, into the hand of those who seek their life. He shall smite them with the edge of the sword, and he shall not spare them, neither have pity nor have mercy. Continuing, verse 8, And unto the people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. So, what uh, what he's saying here is he's going about to tell them how to survive this. Here we go.
here we go verse 8 i'm going to reread re re verse 8 so that you understand this it, it, it goes better in context with the slide and unto the people thou shalt say thus saith the lord behold i set before the way of life and the way of death so the ones that stay in the city right now and fight they're going to die verse 9 he that abideth in the city shall die by the sword and by famine and by pestilence but he that goeth out and falleth to the chaldeans surrender yourselves right and that besiege you he shall live so who wants who shall surrender to the to the army will live and his life shall be unto him for prey so to do with as i will right so slavery servant whatever but you'll live you'll live so this is the ultimatum they have you you still god's shown mercy to them right but as far as uh back in the uh which chapter Yeah, so anybody that uh, wants to live, they, they must surrender. Uh, and, he, and this is what's laid out in front of them. What do you think they're going to do personally? Um, I, I, you know, we all know the answer, but, you know, by the behaviors, you can kind of tell that they're going to rebel because they've been rebelling. So verse 10. For I have set my face against the city and for evil, not for good, saith the Lord. And it shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Verse 11. And touching, and touching the house of the king of Judah, saith, Hear ye the word of the Lord. 12. O house of David, thus saith the Lord, execute judgment in the morning, and deliver him that spoileth out of the hand of the oppressor. Lest my fury go out like the fire and burn that none quench it because of the evil of your doing remember the oppressor who's the oppressor they're going to deliver the house of david out of the hands of the oppressor the oppressors are those those leaders the sovereign uh leaders kings priests you know in the house of god that steer the the god's people wrong and um oppress them make uh Press the poor, you know, not just with the truth of God, but also um, to be able to provide for them themselves so they can live a healthy life, right? This greed that's going on, this, this drive for power, um, God sees it and he's taking their power away from them, right? Remember, God is the uh, champion for the people. All right, so I want to uh, go into something that's a little off topic, but kind of not. Verse 9, we're going to go back. It says, he that abideth in the city shall die by the sword, which is war, famine, and pestilence. Okay, what I see right here is two of the four horsemen, and I'm going to show you how. Now, we all hear about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, right? Oh, they're only to be, they're going to just be released during the time of the apocalypse. And um, I believe they've been released a long time ago. Even as far as the Old Testament, you know, I believe that they've been around since the war started. Right? They're the reasons for it. They're the evil spirits that roam the earth until the time of judgment. They're um, They're restrained at this point. But I believe, in, I believe in the end of times, they're not going to be restrained. They're going to be free to do what they're going to do. All right. And let's go ahead and I'm going to try to support this claim. Second Chronicles 20, verse 8 re, begins, and we're going to read 8 through 11. And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, 9, if when evil cometh upon us as the sword of judgment, excuse me, the sword, which is the red one, judgment, which is the black horse, pestilence and famine, which is the 
the um, pale horse. We stand before this house in thy presence and thy name in this house, and they cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt bear and help. So the white horse is there in context. I believe it's in there because they're, these three horses are coming to take over. And that white horse is that conquering horse. Even though it didn't use, but it used three of those horses, right? And we're going to read it Revelation 6 too, so you can hear it for yourself. Verse 10. Um, and now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom they would not let Israel invade. Then they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast out of thy possession, which thou hast given us as inheritance. So, these are the ones that are standing in the way of, uh, of the Israelites taking their possession, which is, the, um, I believe, they're descendants of giants. All right. And uh, they were trying to stand in the way of uh of God's people and the promise of God and their inheritance. So let's go ahead and read Revelation six. Alright, Revelation six, one through eight. And we're gonna kind of fly through this, but I want you to understand this why I'm saying saying this. I believe this is what you can do a word search on these titles of the horses and you'll see that they they're worded together at least two to three to sometimes four, I believe. I, I know there's a fourth one. There has to be. And um, But go ahead and do the research, and you'll see that they, they run together. Right? Revelation 6, 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of the thunder of one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Now, these four beasts are the four... Um, beasts of god not these four horsemen okay they're helping um john the apostle in his vision to uh see this vision all right back to revelation 6 verse 2 and i saw behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown and was given unto him and went forth conquering to conquer so he's coming to rule right this white horse Verse 3, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. 4, and when they went out another horse that was red, and the power was given to him that sat therein to take a piece from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and they were given unto him the great sword. So here's the, uh, here's war, right? Um, and this is the sword, right? That's another word for it. And you'll see, you see it in Second Chronicles right here, the sword, right? The red horse. Um, so there was a book, and I can't recall it. I'm going to leave it in the description se section um, that talked about on the earth. Now, I can't confirm this just yet on the earth, but he claimed on the earth, only in recorded history, only has there been 200 years of peace on the earth. Now, this, I believe, would coincide and piggyback on the four horsemen that they have been active. They've been active, I believe, and I haven't been able to prove this. So this is all my opinion right now. Not all of it. I'm, I'm piggybacking on fact in the scripture. But the claim that the seals were broken during the time of the first sin on earth. They were released, but they were restrained. Until every man and woman have had the chance to know the Lord, for the Lord to come and to die for our sins, right? And um, for God's will to be done. And uh, now I can't prove that they were released during the times of the first sin. But afterwards, in the Old Testament, I see the four horsemen all over I'm seeing them by their titles. So let's go ahead and continue. So in 2 Chronicles 20, um, verse 9, we see the sword, 
We see the red horse right now, and we can confirm it. That's the red horse. Now let's look at the black horse. It's right next to the sword. It's the judgment, right? Okay, Revelations 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him with a pair of balances in his hand. Verse 6. And he heard a voice in the midst of the beast, four beasts, say, O measure of wheat for a penny, and a three measures of barley for a penny. And now... And see thou hurt not the oil or the wine. So they were restrained on their judgment. They were coming down. Okay. That black horse. That black horse goes and in, in, um, tests uh, to see if uh, God's hedge of protection is pulled. And he does the way and the balances. Right. To bring the judgment. Right. And um, I mean, I believe they're part of the of the. Of the evil spirits that are the accusers that come in and accuse their brethren day and night, right? They come and show the balances to God, try to show the balances to God. Look at what these people are doing. We give, we want them, give them to us because they're the judgment, the scales are tipping to our favor to destroy them. And God does not change his word, right? God warns us about iniquity and warns us about these things. And um, there are certain things that are spiritual laws that we must understand and abide by if we expect to survive and our families to survive. But in verse six, um, a measure of wheat for a penny and a three measures of barley for a penny. These are the measurements of judgment that are coming down. I don't know how to interpret this. Not yet, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really interested in this. But I believe that's the context of it. Now, what that means with the barley and the pennies, um, I'm not sure. Maybe the degree of judgment. But continuing on the verse, and see thou hurt not the oil or the wine. So what we got here is the oil what, is representation of what? The Holy Spirit. The ones who have the Holy Spirit, God's beloved, do not mess with my people. Right? Warning. Warning them. Right? And and the wine. Right? The, um, the beloved. Right? The... Uh, the ones that are trying to do the the right thing in a society of evil, right? Do not touch them. Do not mess with one the ones with the seal of God on their head, right? In their foreheads. With the, that means the seal of truth in their minds. All right. So what we got here, we got two uh, horses in Second Chronicles identified, I believe. Second Chronicles. Uh, so we got the we got the red and the black with the judgment. Now let's look at the pale horse. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name is Saddam with death and hell, and followed with them. And power was given unto him there over the fourth of part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with the hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. I believe these are ones causing mayhem, too. They can be identified in uh, throughout the land. Um, that's the pale horse. So we identified three of the four horsemen in second chronicles right here now i believe that fourth one to come and conquer um i don't know some people say it's satan himself the white horse or um a demonic spirit which uh takes a seat in the land and i believe that's true too because of daniel um chapter 10 verse 20 when michael the archangel said be, behold, I come to fight the prince of Persia, and and then in a short time, and I'm, I'm not saying it uh, uh, exactly, but soon the prince of, of uh, Grisha shall come, and I shall fight him. Those are demonic spirits that are seriously strong demonic spirits. It takes Michael the archangel to handle, right? And uh, I believe once these three horsemen come and uh, clear a path, the white horse comes in to sit there and to establish a demonic stronghold, right? And that's how I see this. And that's how I um, interpret this. So you can take it for what you will. Um, but this is what I'm seeing. <clears throat> Psalms 91, 5 through 6. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. So Psalms 91, my, my brother Jerry got me on this one. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for uh, for um, being a man of God and helping me out. Uh, just a quick shout out that um, 
you know, he's, he's helped this man out a lot, encouraged me to do this channel. So, um, all right, but let's finish the uh, Psalms 91, verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at the noonday. So that pestilence, right, walketh in darkness. Um, I believe this is a literal truth. I believe this is, uh, this is not just a, uh, an allegory. I believe this is literal. I believe there is an evil spirit and he's walking. I believe that evil spirit, a pestilence, is one of the horsemen, right? So there's some more documentation. I got two different um, books in the Bible. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2 through 6 through 7. It's going to talk about the restrainer. And it reads in verse 6. And, now, and that's again 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. And now ye know that withholdeth thee that he might be revealed in this time. So who would withhold it? They called him the restrainer. Now that's not biblical, but that's just uh, um, something, that the description of something that's holding back this evil. And I'll read it again. And know, and now ye know that withholdeth that he may be revealed at this time. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken away out, out of the out of the way. So there's something, some may call it um, the Holy Spirit. Some may call it it's Michael the Archangel. Could be both, could be one or the other. Um, people talk about it, but they don't really know. Personally, God will use who he's going to use. But remember, Michael the Archangel is not omnipotent. Meaning he can be every at all places at all times. And I believe the restrainer is the Holy Spirit. Myself, if I was to lean more towards, well, the, will God use Michael the Archangel at times? Yes, I believe so. He can be the restrainer in specific times. So him being not the restrainer, I believe it could be just the army of God, the restrainer. But I believe it, it, um, if I was to lean over one thing, it would be the Holy Spirit of God who came after Jesus Christ ascended um, on the day of Pentecost, right? And when he's pulled, the four horsemen have no restraints. And this is when they go and havoc just rules the earth and mayhem. So, verse, uh, let's go back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 21, verse 13 and 14. And we're starting with verse 13. Behold, I'm against thee, O inhabitants of the valley. And the rock of the plain, and saith the Lord would say, Who shall come down against us, and who shall enter into our inhabitants? So, we got to remember mountains, valleys, hills uh, are places of where they put altars for idolatry. So, when God says, Oh, inhabitants of the valley, these are talking about the people that are, that are worshiping these false gods. And not just the God, the false God worship, but also the demonic power behind it. See, the more I've studied the Bible, the more I, I believe that the, the evil and the devils, the, 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 the Satans, um, he, um, they, they use mankind as a human shield to do their will. And then when God uh, sees that and brings a judgment, they creep back in the darkness thinking they're going to escape from it, right? But God sees them too. So when God says this, he's not just talking to the people that are doing this. He's talking to the demonic spirit behind it. That's why he gets so angry because he sees these, these things going on. And he goes, you're falling right into the trap. And, you know, there's a point where your mind's so twisted, you're just going to be a, a spiritual cancer. And you'll kill off everybody. That's why God says if the days of the end, even the elect uh, shall lose their life if if he if the Lord does not short shorten the days at the end of times right that's how bad it's going to be verse 14 but i will punish you according to the fruits of your doings saith the lord and i will kindle a fire in the forest thereof and it shall devour all things round about so i put this quote by ws gilbert i'm um, sorry i gotta stretch a little bit that the punishment fit the crime 
Well, who said that first? God said that first, right? But I will punish you according to the fruits of your doings, right? The punishment comes from the fruits of the evil that you are doing, right? So that's a crime, right? What we deemed in our societies as crimes is an evil on, on certain degrees. Now, I don't know if W.S. Gilbert did it, uh, counterfeited God's word, or he did it ignorantly, or um, or uh, what this man did at this point. But I'm not here to judge the dude. But what I am do, here to do is to give uh, uh, give um, give the credit who who gets the credit, and that's our Father in Heaven. This is His wisdom, not ours. And I want to give this back to him. And um, that man did not invent this saying. It was God, first and most of all. So he gets the credit. Thank God for this this wisdom that he gives us and his holy word. And with that, God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you go out and have a great rest of your day. Remember, if your day starts off rotten, you always start it over in the middle of the day with prayer and with God um, and our Lord Jesus Christ to take over in your life. And with this, take care and have a great rest of your day.